Yes, everybody, Russ and West. Oh, bit, oh, bit low there. I'm already short enough. Russ and West on that work. Hope you're all safe and well, my friends. Happy Friday. We've done another week. Give yourself a pat on the back. And we go through uh, a nice weekend with the start of the Euros. Kicks off later on today. Go and check out our um, Hammers Guide to the Euros, which we put out at lunchtime, talking about all the players that West Ham in our squad who we're representing in the Euros and their pathways and things like that, and give you a Rusty B's tip for the top um, in terms of who's going to win. But it's Hammers Headlines in association with the KUMB.com boys. Uh, we've got uh, three stories to talk about, um, all very interesting in their own right. Um, and, and, and they sort of, in a weird way, all sort of me- m- all molds together, melt, smelt, almost like a smelter, um, in terms of showing the trajectory of the club, if that makes sense. Uh, hopefully it does it by the end. Let's start with the first story, and it's about Ben Johnson, according to XWH employee. He um, stated on his podcast the other day that talks between Mr. Johnson and the club um, have been progressing. Um, and it's widely, it was, however, it's been widely anticipated uh, that he would depart uh, with an impasse on any potential deal. Um, I think we mentioned before, I think Crystal Palace, the Everton Rangers were all sort of leading candidates. Also, Galatasaray, I read yesterday, were also interested. However, since the arrival of JLo, um, there has been renewed optimism and talks have progressed. And Johnson could well be signing a new long-term contract at the club. Um, the club he's been here since he's eight years old, really. Um, X was quoted in saying, Johnson's been offered a new five-year deal and he's apparently getting close to accepting it. Uh, Lopetegui has made it clear he would like to see him push for the first choice right back position. And I think that's, to be honest, where he needs to be. He needs to, and I've said this before, for me, being a, Jack of all trades is great, but you come to a point where you need to put your marker down. This is this is me. This is me. Oh, oh, oh. and that's what I think Ben needs to do. There is a opportunity to take on that right back position and have that right back position for several years. He's still a young lad. Um, also, he brings a lot of um, what's the word? Uh, not not collateral, but he, he is collateral, really. He's an academy player. You know, we have to have quotas for academy players in our squad. He is a homegrown quota player as well. So he ticks two boxes and um, he, is, he is still versatile. So, you know, there's it's nothing wrong being that first choice, you know, or competing for that first choice right back position with Vladimir. But also there's the opportunity that if the game needs changing, he can drop into midfield. and perform very admirably when he played in central midfield. He can push up a bit and, and play on the wings if need be. He can drop back in the centre half. So if one of the centre halves gets injured or they decide in mid game to go to a back three. And that's what's really important with Ben, I think. You know, it's it's great that he's got that versatility, but the ability to use it in game, which I think he's never really done. He's been come he's all like been under Moyes particularly, he's been brought on and just to plug a gap, but actually utilising his vers- versatility within the, within a sort of match environment in the game, rather than necessarily fitting in where we need him to fit him. So hopefully we get some uh, resolution with him because I think he's and I'm, and I know we've said you know before what do people think and and there's like there is a I reckon sixty thirty so sorry sixty thirty I've done my maths seventy thirty in terms of pro Ben to let Ben go. So, yeah, we need him. I, I, I generally think we need him, particularly in this rebuild. So, you know, five-year deal. I think he should sign the team. Who's next? Let's talk about investors. Um, now, according to an article in The Sun, West Ham are among several Premier League clubs seeking investment uh, to remain competitive at the very top level. An article written by... Um, 
the journalist Matt Hughes yesterday explained that Hammers are using advisors Rothschilds and Co to help bring in funds to, in order to strengthen the squad without breaching FFP regulations. Obviously, Rothschilds were also instructed to try and sell the David Gold shares um, or a percentage of David Gold shares, but that hasn't materialised. Um, it's also believed that Tottenham and Brentford are also using the same advisors um, as West Ham. And we've shown, I think, already our intentions, our metal, so to speak, in the transfer window, having confirmed, obviously, the signing of um, of Luis Guilherme and other recruits on the Hawaii. We've had over 100 players we've been linked with. Um, Nuren Perez from Udinese. And he seems quite soule as well from uh, Juventus. Um, Juventus is looking to buy Marcus Rat and uh, Marcus Rashford. Um, the other one, Mason Greenwood, uh, apparently. So that's why they're looking to get rid of some of their wingers to bring in f- fresh blood, so to speak. So that could be going in. Um, obviously, looks like we're getting the third choice goalkeeper when the contracts deadline finishes at the end of June. Uh, so from the first of July, there'll be a free um, transfer. Whether it is Asmir Berkovic, whether it is where's Fodringham, I think that's quite a shrewd move again it's adding another home both of those players are homegrown um and so as i said city have been doing it for years scott carson richard wright they've been buying that third choice goalkeeper who's not going to get any game time really um but he's there to be the training goalkeeper as well um i mean you've got someone like i think isn't it isn't it Heaton? Heaton's gone with the England squad to be the training goalkeeper, I believe, as well. And that stops the goalkeepers getting injured in training as well. So it's quite a clever idea. But anyway, it, it, it comes as a little surprise with FFP sanctions and everyone trying to toe the line that, that clubs are looking for investors. And, you know, we cannot risk falling foul of FFP. We've seen the impact it could have. <coughs> Everton lost a lot of points. Uh, Nigel Fry's lost points. Um, there's still obviously the jury you still decide on Man City's case, Chelsea's case, um, but we need to bring in players at the same time. So we need to bridge that gap. And so investment makes perfect sense in terms of raising the profile of the club, raising the profit levels to enable FFP to uh, see so you're not foul of it. I mean, we did announce a profit from player sales from the last tax year to £17 million. And that was offset by partly offside by a 12 million pre-tax, pre-tax profit tilting into an 18 million pound loss despite obviously leave, you know, lifting the trophy in 22-23 because obviously the way the period and the time and the um, tax year was falling and the reporting year, the actual lifting of the Europa Conference League actually fell fell into this season because it was in July. It was in June rather. So it's going to be interesting to see um, what that investment will mean. Um, but we know that we're one of several clubs looking at um, bringing in investment in order to comply with FFP sanctions. And lastly, let's talk about our, our, our first signing of the transfer window. You know, we've been linked to 105 players, one, one brought in. Less than 1% of everyone that we've been linked to, apparently. But um, a little bit of news from The Athletic um, about sort of the significant nature of this Louis deal. Um, obviously... As of today, that when the transfer window opens, um, and stuff like that, so it'll be signed. Yesterday, they had the um, interview. Did, did have an iron cast interview with Chris and Ginge because um, he only speaks a little bit. Or, well, he speaks a sentence of the Queen's uh, or the King's English now. So um, very confident. Wants to win titles at West Ham. Love it. I hope it's not the championship. I hope it means the Premier League. But according to the Athletic, they reported that scouts from Bayern Munich, Liverpool, Chelsea, Real Madrid, and Barcelona have all been monitoring Luis Guilherme over the past nine months. Um, but it was West Ham and Tim Steiner who's convinced Louis to sign and join the West Ham fraternity for around you know, obviously twenty million, twenty five million. Based, I think it's twenty. I think it's twenty three million euros plus seven million add ons. So that's quite that's quite a feather in our cap in terms of that. You know, we've got a situation now where we're buying play bought a player who has been earmarked by arguably the biggest clubs in the world and Chelsea as well. Um, so a ma- massive feather in the cap and a complete contrast, a complete step change to 
getting Calvin Phillips on loan. Isn't it? Complete step change. You know, the whole profile of that player, that signing. Although I don't like Tim's open granddad collar shirt. I'll be honest. Looks a bit like man from Del Monte, doesn't it? Old Samba Steindom. Um, but, you know, Tropica Tim has, uh, he's, he's delivered. I mean, it, you know, it, it's, again, you know, when, we, we have to wait and see what's happening um, in terms of how he develops into the side. But, as I said before, and it, again, it, you know, it's it's a, it's a different mentality, isn't it? I don't, as I said before, I don't think I'd see David Moyes, uh, David Moyes signing being like Luis Guilherme, but a JWP would be a David Moyes. It was very much a now rather than progressing for the future. You can look at that, you know, maybe because he wasn't given a new contract, so he was looking for now rather than in three years' time. I totally get that. Um, but this is how it should be done. We should be bringing in players now who are who have potential and we buy on potential, which means you buy them cheaper as well. Louis could quite easily be in three, four years' time, 60, 70, 80 million pounds player realistically um and we would never really blow out the water for that um but buying him now for a relatively small fee yes there is a 20 percent add-on um in terms of sign on um you know in terms of buy on clause um for Palmares, but that that is apparently is on profit so we, so it's only going to kick in if we make more than we sell him bought him for um so yeah i'm all i'm all for it i think and i'm, I'm excited we did a show a couple of days ago. Um, Budgie and Kieran did one. Are you nervous or excited for the for the season ahead? And there was a bit of a bit of both. You know, he's nervous. It's a, it's it's a new way of it's a new way of working in recruitment. It's bringing in players on potential rather than necessarily ones with the finished article. So there will be transitional periods. But what they've done is they brought him in now. You know, so he's got two months really until the Premier League kicks in. You know, he's got two months to. Bring his family over to settle to to to. It was the first his first time he's been in London and stuff like that. And it's I'm I'm really excited by by what this means. Not just for Louis, obviously being the third Louis apparently we've signed according to these Michael Brown with Louis uh, Barmorte and Louis Jimenez. But you know, I mean, technically, if Louis Brown because he's he's a Louis, but it's Louis with spelt differently. So, but he hasn't signed yet. So anyway. Um, no, I think it's I think it's brilliant, and uh, I hope the next next one needs to come very soon. That's the it's about building momentum now, and I think with Louis Guilherme, it, it, it's it's a statement signing. It's a statement signing for West Ham amongst the football fraternity, but it's a statement signing also within West Ham internally for people like Ben Johnson, for people like Cresswell, for people like Caduce, for people like Bowen. You know, Bowen signed a seven-year deal, and this is showing that we're we're investing in the future. We're investing in the side. We're not, you know, and and spending a lot of money on a on a guy who's played not a lot of games. He scored one goal, one senior goal, very good goal though, but one senior goal just shows the mentality has changed. And um, I think we all should be excited. We should be nervous as well. You know, it's, you know, we've been used to that being under a risk-adverse management system for the last four years, maybe. So it is a changing mentality for us as well. You know, you know, it, we're going to have to trust him with these signings. And he's, I mean, to me, he ain't done a bad record since he signed, since he joined us. You know, he's brought in Caduce, he's brought in Alvarez, he's brought in, you know, Mavropanos. And those signings, obviously, were slightly different. They were needs to plug in gaps now, which needed to improve. We need to improve the squad. We need to improve the depth of the squad as well and the longevity of the squad. And that's why a signing like Luis Guilherme, I don't expect him to start in August, but I expect him to be on the bench. I expect him to be introduced. And then, you know, you'll see more and more of him. And, um, yeah, first of many. And that's me warbling on for a bit, about waxing lyrically about Louis Guilherme. So there we go, my friends. As I said, keep an eye on the channel. Um, we have got the, um, we'll be doing all the coverage of the Euros as well as obviously we're going to, the, the transfer rumours do not relent. In fact, they ramp up even more because there's more football to watch. We'll have West Ham scouts in Germany, no doubt, looking at some of the, um, some of the, the, the big teams as well as some of the smaller teams looking at possible bargains, looking at players who could fit into the West Ham setup. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. I am excited. Um, anyway, if you're new around here, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share, subscribe. Over 25,000 subscribers now. So thank you very, very much. Anton's greedy. He wants us to get 30,000 by the end of the year. 
Could it be done? Who knows? Don't forget to check out these at mybrand.com as well. Um, news reviews and opiniones. Lots of great chat at the forum. And until next time, have a great weekend, guys. Take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble. And come on, England, for Sunday. <laughs>